Hello, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to Liquid Brain. So today I want to talk about object-oriented programming in R and introduction to S3 and F4 object. So what will be in this video is the main difference between object-oriented programming versus the normal functional programming that we always do in R. Uh, how to create and manipulate an S3 and S4 object as well as a look at a, a very quick look at the S4 object. So in this case, I'm going to use a summarized experiment object from Bioconductor, which is a very common object used for bioinformatics and communications and so on. So I also include a short R workshop after the slide so they can run it on yourself as well. So what's the main difference between FP and OOP? So functional programming focus on how to develop functions so that you have, let's say, a single data and you have multiple steps to analyze that until you get the end product that you want. While OOP or object-oriented programming focus on uh, you want you want to have a standardized object you can pass around to different um, functions and program and applications so that you always be uh, consistent and you can develop functions specifically only for a certain type of object. So an example here would be if you have a, let's say a, a huge weather data you want to normalize and log transform and do all the data cleaning and then you know you run a machine learning algorithm that will be more of a functional programming approach while you are running something like web applications where you have multiple users logging at the same time and you want to summarize each of the users so each of the user data instead of storing in a big database you can store all the user data in a single object so that when you pass a single object onto that functions or onto that program, it work exactly the same every single time. And it allows you to really scale up your number of users and, and be a lot more simple when you're dealing with single users calculations. While if you, do a, if you store a user data in a long, long databases, every time you need to find a certain user, they have to look through all the users and database and do that summarization again. So it's a bit complicated. So in normal situation, when you're using R for data analysis, most of the time we're doing functional programming and object-oriented programming are usually like the starting part of it or communication part of it. It's not really the core of the data analysis pipeline. So what is an object? So like I say just now, an object is a data structure that has some attributes and methods which act on its attribute. So attributes is actually just um, like, like you can think of it as a column in a data frames. Every single column, let's say, is the name, the email, and so on. While method is a kind of functions that you run on the certain object. So in functional programming, we call them function. In object-oriented programming, we call them methods. They are they're kind of similar. Okay, so class is a blue... There's also something called class. So class is a blueprint, which is like... Uh, you can think of it as an empty template where you can put things into it, okay? So you, you'll see that later in the, in the pipeline. So we have two main type of object in R, actually there's three, I'm not gonna talk about reference object. I'm gonna have a separate video on that one later on, if I manage to get it done. So S3 object is more primitive. You can think of something like a list when you're dealing with R, where you can just concan it and just join many, many uh, data, uh, data vectors together to form a list. An S3 object is very similar to that. While S4 objects are a little bit more structured, there's a little bit more nuance in the creation and how you can, you can make it work. However, because it's more standardized and more structured, it's a lot easier to, to manipulate and make sure when you send an S4 object from me to another developer, we, we know how it will look like and we know how to manipulate around that thing. So, uh, slight difference, S3 slightly more primitive, S4 slightly more complicated, and yeah, this uh, down there is just how they are created and how they access, which I'm going to move on to R. So uh, I'll, I'll link both the slides and the R script that I'm using over here uh, in the description below, so you can go ahead and, and download the script now if you want to. I'm just going to make my thing a little bit bigger, so that it is a little bit easier to see for everyone. Okay, so, yep, okay, so um, you don't really have to install everything now, so all the, all the object-oriented programming is actually inbuilt into the R version that I'm in, which is 4.0.4, if I'm not wrong, the latest one that, at the time of the writing. 
Okay, so first thing, how do we create an S3 object? It's not S4. Okay, so in S3 object, you can just simply create a list where you have the name as the John, uh, age as 21, GPA as 3.5. So if you click on the attribute, you can see that, sorry, not attribute, you click on the object, you can see that um, there's a name, which is John, age is 21, CGPA is 3. So this is like kind of the one user data object over here. So that's what this is a simple S3 object. Once you have done that list, you just convert um, the object into using a class function, and that will convert that into an S3 object, as simple as that, which is why it is not as, it, like I said just now, it's not as structured and it is not very, it's not easy to manipulate when you want to work around with other people. So how do you access is that you can use the, the dollar function as uh, how we always do it, just S3, H, and you get, a, you get the, the content within the object quite easily. So very similar to this and very similar to the, the data frame approach that we always do with R. Okay, so uh, instead of actually just uh, doing it as a list, we can also set something like a constructor. So a constructor function is just what we do uh, up there, but a little bit more automated and ha has a little bit more check inside. So uh, this is also a constructor function. Basically, it's just a robot that helps you to, to put your extra object together. So just now we have to actually go for name equals to what, age equals to what, and CGPA equals to what before we convert that into a into an S3 object. While having a constructor, something like this, you can just put um, the students, which is the name of the function, Paul 263, and you can create the object very easily. So you have S3, which is John, and S3.2, which is Paul. So very easy, you can create a lot of your S3 project. And once you have done your, with your S3 object, you can also write a custom function for it. And you can see OBJ actually means object. And what they're, what they're trying to do in this uh, function is that they're trying to print out uh, a, a simple string. Your grade is object at CGPA. So they extract the, CG, the GPA within an object and then they do uh, a line down. So slash n means that they is a line break, basically. So once you run grade student last three, uh, they will tell that your grade is 3.5 and you can also run it on, let's say I want to run it on 3.2 your grade is three. So that's just how basically an abstract object function, not that different from the normal way that we do things. So now we go into S4 object, which is actually slightly more complicated. So first thing you need to do is to set the class, which is actually, first of all, put in the name of the, uh, the class that you want to set. So in this case, the class is a student and you have three slots over there. Slots is what I say just now, it's, a, it's an empty, um, space where you can fill your data in. So we are creating an object and with three slots over there. So first one is a name, second one is an H, and CGPA is also uh, the third slot. Okay, so it's a character numeric and numeric, and you also create it under a list, what, like what we do just now. But instead of doing a list directly, you have to do a whole class thing and the slot things. Okay, so once you're done with the set class, you can just run a new command, a new function, sorry, and you can just uh, put um, what is the kind of class we want to set in. So in this case, we want to set a new object with a class of students with the name as John, the age is 21, and CGPA as 3.5, and you will get very, very similar output from the asterisk. It's a lot more troublesome, but you also ensure that every single time you try to create something with this class, you always have these three attribute, and this within the three attribute, name will always be a character, H will always be a numeric, and GPA will always be a numeric, and so on. Okay, so you can check if a certain thing is an S4 object, we're using the is S4 function. So is S4, S4, so true means that it's, it is an S4 object, and you can put in S3, where an S3 object is not an S4 project. Okay, so uh, there's also slightly different way to access the content within S4, where instead of using a dollar sign like a list and data frames and so on, uh, S4 object, you actually need to use a at, so the email address at symbol. So that will also give very similar, give you the name. And you can also use the same way to set or reset or reassign a new value 
into the object. So let's, for example, here S4 now has its GPA of 3.5. But if you just set this one as a using the, the assign function in R as 3.7, and we do that print again, you can see that this GPA has changed to 3.7. Okay, so this is the easier way. Uh, or if you want the other way, which is actually more the more proper way of doing it, is to use the slot function. So a slot function can allow you to print out the name, like what I did just now, or reassign the name, like what we did in the two line, three lines above, and you can see that the, the name has been now changed to Paul. Okay, so if you uh, if you need some help, there's also a show method, which is actually just a, a, a huge list of all the functions you can use. And to be honest, most of the time we're not going to look at it. We're going to look at function as a way of, or oh, where we need something, we're going to Google or uh, that, that goes something, and then we try to do that. I have never tried to read all this list before in my life, so uh, I'm not sure about you, but I include it here just in case someone needs like a print out all the functions and methods that they want. Okay, so we can also use something like the. We can also use some to check whether an object is an S4 function or method, we can also use the is S4 to check a certain function like print and show. So print itself is not an S4 function while show itself is the S4, S4 function. So why do we need to care? Because if you're not using an S4 function or S4 method to run on an S4 object, the output might not be an S4 object anymore. They might coerce into something else. So if you want an S4 object to stay as an S4 object, make sure you use the S4 functions. Okay, just like uh, like I say here, it, it shows exactly the same. But if you're having more downstream analysis, we cannot confirm or they cannot confirm that it will stay as the same structure down the line. Okay, now we go to our example. So I'm gonna make I'm gonna assume that everyone knows how to install a bioconductor package. If you don't, they are, they are also here. So this will install BioC Manager, which is Bioconductor Manager, and then install two different packages. The first one is Airway. So Airway has experimental data from an RNA-seq experiment from human airway between treated and non-treated, or some, some sort of thing like that. I'm not too sure about that, the detail of it. Okay, the second one is the actual one I'm gonna talk about, which is Summarize Experiment. So this is needed so that we are able to manipulate as for object down the road with certain methods that are that are not included in the airway. So airway is the data, summarize, summarize experiment is a lot of other things included inside. Okay, mainly the function of method analysis and so on. Okay, so we include the two library and we first thing is to run the data airway as uh, package airway. So now, so just by running data to, ex so what that means is that we extract the data uh, from the package airway as an object called airway. And we're gonna rename the object called as E, which is a kind of summarized experiment uh, object. So we can see this uh, class as a range summarize experiment. So this is similar to the student done, students class that we talked about just now, where there's specific amount of slot and each of the slot has specific requirements on how, what kind of data you can put it in. So we are dealing with only character and function, uh, sorry, character and numeric just now. But you can also put, let's say, a list within into that slot. You can also put a data frame to that slot. You can also put some other kind of thing into that slot. And it doesn't have to be a single data into a single slot. In this case, you can do like a dimension to one slot. You can put a column data into one slot. And you can have a lot of things within that. And you can actually have a look at the overall data structure like that, where you have the row ranges, column data, assay elements, and metadata, and so on. Okay, so first thing first, uh, check if it's an S4 object. Uh, it's true, but you know, there, there's a little bit of problem here and there because of the environment. Not gonna talk, talk about it for now, we'll do that when we actually do the actual experiment later. Okay, so um, like I said just now, so what we see just now to access the one of the attributes, sorry, to access one of the slot within an S4 object, we can use the add symbol. So in this case, I'm gonna look at what is the assay. And what's inside assay, you can see that reference class object of class, uh, shallow, simple, light assay, and you have a few of data, you have a list of length one, and you have a count, okay? So we can see that this is a list. So in within the assay, there's a list. So now we can actually access uh, 
the assay and account actually to actually access the data within the slot. Okay, so there's multiple rabbit hole going down over here. So every object will be slightly different, but summarize experiment is actually quite a complicated object with multiple layers that I'm not going to talk about for now. Just understand that they are there for a reason because they need to encapsulate the whole summarize as a whole experiment data and the summarization. Okay, so you can also run, let's say, row range, which is also part of the specific uh, S4 functions over here, or S4 methods over here, so that um, you can actually access the data. So all of them exist to run different kind of experiment and different kind of analysis. So that's for it for now for S4 object. So just for a recap, we talked about what is OOP and FP. We talked about S3 and S4, S3 more simple, S4 more structured. And we look at the summarized experiment object, which is actually a data from the airway package. Okay, and we also run through a short uh, R workshop on how to manipulate and how to include all this data and how do you roughly have an idea. So this is actually part of the video that I started because uh, we are working on both uh, a single cell experiment pipeline and I'm working on the RNA seq workflow actually from one of the the, the the really good paper I found online from Michael I love. Uh, that's the name of the author. I love to, I love you too, Michael. But you know, it's a great paper that I will link in the video description, video description down below. And we'll hopefully will come out as soon as I can. And life is pretty busy nowadays. For now, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.